Uber is expanding into Japan and you'll have no idea how they're actually doing it. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and to end off the week, to end off the 4th of July weekend in a fun note, let's talk about this really quite humorous story from the Mercury News about how Uber, who is ex are expanding in Japan, how they're doing it, because technically ride-sharing is banned in Japan. You can't have ride-sharing in Japan, but Uber wants to be in that market. And they have found a kind of almost cute way to expand their business in Japan, and that is delivering ramen noodles with grannies wearing sneakers. However, before we talk about any of that, let's have a word from our sponsor. Thanks, Kevin. Hi, I'm Jonathan with GigWorker.com, and we've been commissioned to conduct a survey by an insurance company that's getting ready to put out a new insurance product specifically for Uber and Lyft drivers. But they want to get some information from drivers that will help them tweak the insurance so it really fits our needs. So I wanted to invite you to participate in the survey because they're going to use your answers to help them design the cheapest Uber and Lyft insurance available. Not only will it be cheaper, but it will cover a lot more, like lost wages when you can't work because your car is in the shop. Think about that. So if you're an Uber or Lyft driver, would you take about five minutes to complete the survey? Kevin said he'll leave a link down below in the description. If you could click on that at the end of the video, that would be great. And before we continue to the article, that survey that they're doing, it has been expanded. They're looking for at least 500 people to fill it out. So if you want to help do your part to support the channel, take the survey real quick. It shows that you are interacting with the ad and, you know, it helped, you know, their generous donations and sponsorship have made it much easier for me to produce near daily content for you guys. Anyway, let's look at this Mercury News article. Grannies in running shoes are delivering ramen for Uber in Japan. Yep, yeah, that is actually what the headline says. Like, absolutely amazing. Yep, there it is. I don't know what this white thing is. I guess we're just going to have to deal with that. So let's look at this article. Uber Technology Inc. strategy for Japan, where ride sharing is banned, is as unique as the country itself. Think grandma in running shoes delivering ramen noodles. Chief Executive Officer Dara Karashahi was in the country this week to stress the importance of the market where the San Francisco-based company has built a growing food delivery business but kept rides limited to black car hires and taxi dispatches. The Archipelago is also home to Uber's biggest shareholder, SoftBank, Corp, Softbank Group Corp., and where he's planning to boost staff in the coming year. Quote, the elderly are actually signing up for Eats Couriers, Karashahi told Bloomberg News. Eats has been a huge success for us in Japan. It is going to be a very effective introduction to the Uber brand. Building up Uber Eats could be the company's best chance for now to capture revenue in the third world third largest economy. More than 10,000 restaurants and 15,000 couriers are part of a delivery network spanning 10 Japanese cities, according to the CEO. That puts the service within the reach of about 15% of the population, compared with 70% in the U.S., leaving plenty of room to grow, he said. With an unemployment rate of 2.4%, near quarter century lows, Japan's labor market is tight. The population is aging, adult diapers outsell baby diapers. Seniors are tapping into food delivery to find jobs, in addition to getting hot meals delivered to their doors. Yeah, Japan's economy is definitely a very complicated situation. I do not have the authority to explain what's going on over in Japan with their um, birthing crisis, the lack of weddings, the aging population. However, if you want to look it up, it's very, very fascinating. Particularly, um, look up the story about the Japanese village with the, um, with the straw doll um, occupants, where every time, in this city in Japan, every time someone dies, a doll is made of them and put there to kind of represent them because the population in that town is just dying. So Japan's definitely got a crisis going on in that regard. But again, I'm not qualified to speak about that. And that's kind of a side note anyway. While most workers deliver using a bicycle or scooter, seniors in search of exercise are doing it on foot. This is one area unique to Japan, and we are looking if we can expand to the rest of the world. Now, a lot of you might be saying, like, oh, poor U you Uber, you're making the grannies walk the food. Here's the thing, guys, I've been to Japan. We'll be going there again next year, by the way. Hopefully, I'll do some vlogs while I'm over there. Japan, particularly like cities like Tokyo and Kyoto, people walk 
everywhere. Like, everywhere. They, they walk everywhere. They use the public transportation system. They have the speeding bullet trains. It's just... If I lived in Japan, I could see myself not owning a car. It seems like it would be more of a hassle to own a car in Japan than it would be worth. Because of the way the roads are. It's just people walk everywhere. And that's, by the way, why most of them are so skinny. They eat small quantities of food. And they're usually walking it off throughout the day. And drinking a lot of water. So, it's not a bad thing that these elderly women in Japan are delivering food. It's not, because they walk everywhere anyway. So, hey, if they're going to walk anyway, they might as well deliver food to make a little extra money. So, you know, that's positive for them. Um, to support its eats business, as well as its nascent efforts, I probably pronounced that wrong, to offer dispatch services for taxi companies, Uber is planning to increase full-time staffing in Japan by more than 30% over the next year for about 100 now in areas such as account management, sales, and local operations. Even at that pace, that's still a tiny proportion of Uber's global headcount of 22,000. Shares in small cap food delivery firms Yum No Machi Sozu Yankai Co. and Ride On Express Holdings Co. slid more than 3% in Tokyo. Quote, Uber Eats has a cutting-edge, cool image, so concerns could easily develop that young users might switch into Uber Eats, said Iwao Cosmo Security Equities Manager's Tashikazu Horiyuchi. And that is true, by the way. Um, typically, American companies don't do very well in Japan. I mean... There's a couple that um, have made it over there. McDonald's and Coca-Cola are fairly common over in Japan. KFC is actually some... Here's the funny thing about KFC. In Japan, most people buy KFC on Thanksgiving because they think we do that in America. And it's really weird. Like, I, I don't know how they got that idea, but in Japan, KFC is huge on Thanksgiving. And some IMAX screens have creeped up in Japan. However, Microsoft isn't very big in Japan. Google's not very big in Japan. Apple is. Apple products are. Otherwise, Sony, Toshiba, um, Yamaka, all these companies are much more popular in Japan. It's very difficult for an American company to break into Japan because of the Japanese loyalty mentality that they have, which is not a bad thing, by the way. I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying they have it. However, Uber Eats, um, they are, they've got a cool app, and young people will probably enjoy using it. And it's pretty easy for um, the Japanese to um, pronounce, Uber. It's going to be easy for the Japanese to pronounce, so it even kind of sounds almost Japanese. So, that's, um, Uber does have like a uphill battle in breaking into that market, but doing it with Eats is smart. Given Japan's strict regulations against ride-sharing, Uber has chosen to work with regulators. Okay, you know, I didn't expect to be doing this. This line right here is actually pretty important, and maybe this should be like a clue that if forced to regulate in California, it's not the end of ride-share. Look at that right there. Given Japan's strict regulations against ride-sharing, Uber has chosen to work with regulators. Yes, because they want to make money. They want to be in business. So yeah, you know what? If California regulates Uber, they're not going to just jump out of the market. They're going to work with regulators to figure out what to do for their business. And you know what? They've been doing it for a long time in London. London kicked them out. Uber worked with them, and now they're starting to come back. Uber will work with the regulators even if they're forced to. So let this be a lesson here. You do not have to be an independent contractor or you don't have to live by Uber's fast and loose rules. If Uber has to be regulated, they will be regulated and they will work with the regulators. So, there. It rolled out a pilot program in 2016 to provide rides to seniors in the small coastal town of Tangacho, where an aging population was left with dwindling public transport services. Last year, Uber pivoted to partnerships with local taxi companies. It now has deals with eight cab companies in as many cities, including popular tourist destinations Kyoto, Osaka, and Hiroshima. Sony Corp. startup 
Japan Taxi and China's Didi Chuxing are among those that have rolled out competing taxi hailing apps, seeking to make it easier for consumers to hail rides and get to their destinations. Uber Black, the car hire service, is currently available only in Tokyo. Quote, it will take time, but we like what we see in terms of the potential of the market, Kurashahi said. The innovations that we are going to make in taxi are going to carry around the world. The CEO also took time during his Tokyo visit to meet with SoftBank's Mas- Masayoshi Sun, who has built a stake of 13% in Uber worth about $9.8 billion. The conversation focused on the ride-hailing giant's blueprint for growth during the meeting. Quote, if I'm in Japan, you can bet that I'm going to see Masa, Karusha has said. Karusha, he said. Masa is really focused on where we are taking our business three years and beyond from now. So, Sun is in the process of raising money for a second $100 billion vision fund. One question is what assets he might seek to sell to finance SoftBank's portion of another investment fund. Sun raised $28 billion in the first... Yeah, anyway, so anyway. Um... And Karshai um, refused to discuss what they discussed. So anyway, this is how Uber's breaking into the market. Now let's look. They've got pictures here. So this is, you know, Japanese lady delivering food. And this is what the app looks like. Um, it actually looks, um, yeah, it looks fairly similar to the American app. I don't know what those white bars are. So maybe something's going on. That's an ad for PayPal. Um, there's another picture there. By the way, bikes are also a big thing in Japan. Another ad. And there you go. So anyway, I think we will we'll just leave it we'll just leave it there. So anyway, this is smart of Uber getting into um Japan this way. And it might also help them because of the American tourists who might want to eat out, they might use the Uber Eats app to get food delivered to wherever they're staying. However, if you ever are in Japan, I highly recommend not using the app to get food delivered. Go out, look around, see what you can find. There's so many fun things you can find in Japan. I remember being in a Japanese mall in Tokyo, and we just happened to see it. There was a Mexican restaurant in the Japanese mall. And went inside, and the tacos were actually pretty good. I'm not going to lie. They were pretty good. It was funny to look at a menu that said, what is Mexico? And I was thinking, like, what do you mean, what is Mexico? And then it's like, oh, wait, that's right. It's not next door anymore. I kind of forgot where I was. So, anyway, this is Uber's clever way, I would say, of breaking into the Japanese market. And, you know, elderly people, they do a lot of walking. So, it's not cruel. They 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 just walk every day. And, hey, if you can do, make some money and get some deliver some food, make some money? Yeah, why not? Why not do it? Anyway, that's where we're going to end this conversation. What do all of you think? Do you think this is clever of Uber? Do you think it's not clever? Do you think it's mean for some reason? Do you think Uber as a ride-sharing company will break into the Japan's market? I would love to know. So, comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. Also, if gas prices are getting just a little down, check out the GetUpside app below. It's totally free, but you get cash back on every gas purchase. If you want more content from me, check me out at Kevin T. Rodriguez and the Apptrepreneur Vlogs channels. There's different content there. However, there's more for me. And if you want to talk to me or other fellow rideshare drivers out there or food delivery people, check us out at the Apptrepreneur Hangouts on Facebook. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.